What's up everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here to show you some dime bag Daryl techniques. Obviously, you could tell by the guitar. Special thanks to my friend Steve for letting me use this thing. It's pretty awesome. I might have to get one someday. And uh, hopefully you enjoy these techniques. They really helped me out. They made me much a much better guitar player just in the last couple weeks preparing for this video. I really had to nose to the grindstone practice and uh, haven't practiced this much for a long time actually. I feel like a teenager again. So we better get right to it because there's a lot of techniques. So let's start off with the idea of adding a flat five interval to your solos. And he does it masterfully in, well, everything masterfully, but in uh, the song Cowboys from Hell, he starts the solo off with a flat five interval. If you don't know what that is, if you just play a regular power chord, that's a fifth interval. So root note here, fifth interval here. If you flat the fifth interval, you have the flat five. It sounds like this. <laughs> Played together, it's a pretty wicked sound. But when you're doing it in a solo tech uh, context, like he does, you can play them separately. It's a great sound. And later on, we're gonna use it, but we're gonna slide around with it. So you're gonna get this kind of thing. So you can hear it just makes these, this really strange clash of harmonic tones. Let's just go 11th fret, 12th fret, 15th fret on all six strings. So we're gonna go like this. Okay, so if you can achieve that stretch, you're good so far. But what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna put it into a certain picking and hammer-on technique. So we're gonna pick the first three notes and then we're gonna replay those first three notes but we're gonna do it with hammer-ons the second time. And we're gonna repeat that on all six strings even though the real song doesn't do it on all six strings necessarily, the end is a little different. We're gonna do this as an exercise because we're here to learn the techniques, not necessarily the solo, okay? So. <laughs> Speed it up a tiny bit. Okay, then if you go almost full speed, you're gonna notice why he does the hammer on at the end. Because if you have to pick everything, which by the way, we'll have to do later. If you have to pick everything, sometimes it slows you down. It doesn't make it sound as fluid as you want it to be. There's a lot of circular techniques that Dimebag likes to use, and one's more of a legato pull-off technique that's pretty cool, but I still put it in the circular picking realm because that's how I do it. And he did this a lot too, I was watching his hand. Even though he does a lot of alternate picking, sometimes he does economy picking too. So what we're gonna do, it's kind of complicated. We're gonna start at the first string 12th fret, we're gonna go to the 14th fret, and then we're gonna do a 17th fret right to a double pull off back to the 12th fret. The way we're gonna pick that is we're gonna go downstroke, upstroke, hammer the 17th fret, and then pull them both off. So the trick is, is to get a lot out of just a little bit of effort with the right hand. Then we're gonna dip down to the second string, 17th fret with a downstroke, and then we just come back and start over. Now if you notice, because I'm using my down-down picking, it becomes a circle, and then your left hand just has to do a little bit more work and you get a lot of sounds out of it. Now it's time to do some six picking. I love this feeling once you really get in the groove of it. Remember when you practice it, you really wanna get strong with your accenting. We talk a lot about accenting on the website because it's a great way to practice with a metronome, which in turn makes you really lock into a band situation. So if the drummer's playing a certain tempo, you'd really be able to play along to it because you'll know where the accent points are. Accenting means you're just playing some notes harder than others. And in this case, the first note we're gonna play the hardest and the rest of them are just gonna hopefully fall in line. So let's do this. Second string, 12th fret, and then we're gonna go down to the third string, 15, 14, 12, back up, and then return back home to the second string, 12th fret. Slowly, it sounds like this. Slowly. 
סופר דה אקסנט. Now if you practice with a click and you slowly speed up that click over time, eventually you can get pretty slick with this one. A die bag trademark that I really like that not a lot of guitar players I know do is he likes to add the major third to his minor pentatonic while doing a really cool bending technique. So let's try this little dime bag dural motif, if you will, in E minor pentatonic, that's going to be 12th fret. And it's easy to see the 12th fret on this guitar. It's got the razor blade, the Judas Priest razor blade. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to climb up minor pentatonic. We teach that on the website, by the way, if you don't know it. Now, when we get to the top, a lot of people feel boxed in here. Like they don't know what to do because they have to stay within the box of the pentatonic. That could be a problem for a lot of people. But what Dimebag does is he takes the root note, 12th fret here, E. He reaches to the second interval, F sharp, and then he comes down to the second string, 15th fret, and bends it up. So right away, you're breaking out of the box by playing within it a little bit, not necessarily staying on the box itself. After you do this, we're going to go 12th fret to 16th fret, which is going to be a major third interval. And you might ask, well, that's not really in the pentatonic scale, but sometimes you want to augment the, the scale a little bit just to make it sound more interesting for yourself. So if we were to go 12th fret to 16th fret now and then do the same bend at the end, you get a pretty interesting sound when you go back and forth. Two string slides with pull-offs, very important in Cowboys from Hell especially. I'm just going to show you a quick example of it and show you what's going on. I'm going to choose the third string and fourth string, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pull-off on the third string, reach down to the fourth string, and instead of shifting my position and then doing some pull-offs, I'm going to just slide into the new position. So you get a little extra note there. So instead of being like this. I'm going to slide instead to give it a different type of dynamic. So as you can tell, my right hand upstrokes are very important to this. Octave higher. Don't forget, guys, a lot of country players, southern rock players, southern metal players, which I consider Pantera, southern metal, they like to use sixth interval dyads, and that's when you're climbing up two strings. In this case, we're going to be on the first string and third strings, and we're going to play a couple different shapes. We're either going to do this shape here, which is, in this case, going to be the first string, fifth fret, third string, sixth fret, which gives you the sound. Or we're going to be doing... Middle finger on the third string, seventh fret, ring finger on the first string, seventh fret. So one of those two shapes are going to be used in a lot of these examples. Today, we're going to take the end of Cowboys from Hell solo, and we're going to utilize this concept to show you the sound of it. So this is a pretty crazy sound because the harmonics really fight each other up here. I can't explain it, but if you hit it just right, there's this weird middle sound that happens, this hollow tube sound. And uh, Dimebag really exploits that at the end of one of his solos. You guys have to have a killer. When I say guys, I mean guys, girls, everybody. Everyone's included. With your right hand, you have to have really good muted palm muted rhythms, I should say. And if you take your right hand and place it the side of your hand where the bridge meets the string and you start to play, you get that real heavy Metallica. And that's no different for Pantera. You have to use this quite a bit. That's the sound they get, a lot of that real tight muted sound. And one thing that's kind of tough at first when you start playing Pantera are there's a lot of weird syncopated rhythms. So whether it's Psycho Holiday or part of a new level, you just have to get really good and rhythmic with your right hand. I recommend a lot of metronome playing and a lot of tapping your foot. And we teach that on the website as well. But check this out. So you might just want to start with downstrokes. Downstrokes. 
Add upstrokes. Speed it up. Then you could try different triplet rhythms. Then you get crazy. The key here is a syncopated right hand locking into the groove. Now I'm not going to kill my friend's guitar, but uh, I'm going to do a few harmonic dive bombs. And if you watch Dimebag, he's really good at taking his whammy bar and bringing it backwards. And he uses that in order to pull up in the sound. So you might see me reach back like this. And if I do, it's because I'm pushing the bar back here, which causes the string to get tighter and the sound goes up. Let's start with your typical, you know, harmonic dives. We're just gonna go to the third string for the most part because that seems to be the most affected by the tremolo bar. So I'm gonna hit the fifth fret natural harmonic. And if you don't know what that is, once again, website. But it's where you touch the string at a particular point, And when you play it, you just get a real high piercing sound, which is great for the, you know, the cemetery gates ending of the solo where he's, or the ending of the song where he's really pulling it up high. He gets some pretty insane harmonics and that's what he's, he was really known for was real screaming harmonic dives. So let's start with just the fifth fret though. So I'm being a little gentle on this guitar. Like I said, I don't want to kill it. So we might not go completely crazy like Dimebag did, but you'll at least get the idea of the technique. All right, so you could have, I could have done that and pulled up on the bar too. That's pretty fun. I never get to do that on my Stratocaster, so. Uh, then you can go to the higher frets. In this case, you're gonna think this is lower, but it pr produces higher tones. So let's go to the fourth fret. We have the third fret. We have 2.6, 2.4, 1.7. There's a whole bunch in this area that we can we can use. So let's try fourth fret. That's your police siren sound right there. Let's try some of these over here. I love the ones that come out and there's two of them happening. It sounds like a sci-fi theremin type thing. I like to call it the theremin dive. I love octave jumps because it could take an idea and it, you could just move it around to do two different octaves. And it really sounds like you're doing something kind of awesome and different, but it's really just the same thing played in two different places. So let's say this is your first lick. Well, you might be able to just move that up 12th fret, 12 frets like he does and get some cool stuff out of it. So try that sometime, just count up 12 frets and do the exact same thing, the mirroring technique, and uh, get more out of what you've already done. Just like when we were doing dive bombs on the third string, those harmonics can come in handy in some tricky rhythms. And in the beginning of one of their songs, they actually start off using all harmonics, just picked in a cool way. <laughs> Some people just like to pick the string really fast and move their hand around on it. It's got the Billy Idol thing going on. Smashing Pumpkins have done it before. Something like that. We'll worry about that in the Billy Corrigan video if I make one. But that's the idea is these harmonics can be very useful, both in leads for squeal and dive bombs, also for rhythms, as you know, with Randy Rhodes during Crazy Train. It's a cool way to dress up a rhythm as well, so don't forget that. One of the hardest things to do for me when I was practicing as a kid was to do descending threes, but I found Dimebag uses these all the time. He'll harmonize them, they sound really cool, but what you should do is pick a scale that you're really good at 
preferably a three note per string scale. I like to use the shred scale that I talk about a lot on the website and just do it in three. So we descend three notes, come back one, descend three. We've done this before in other videos. Now a big problem people have is when they pick it, they're alternate picking and their pick can get caught in a lot of strings. So try to take your pick and curve it, tilt it this way a little bit. Some people go way too much and it almost, it feels like they're sawing their strings in half, but really just give it a little bit of a tilt and you could really smoothly flow between strings. So I'll go slow if you want to watch the pick. Now, just like before we talked about jumping octaves in order to double what you have already done to make it even uh, twice as cool. Well, you could do that with pull-offs as well. I like He likes to do, and I like to do now because of him, instead of just doing one pull-off, just double everything you do and it just makes it sound better. Now, if I did half that amount, you would just have half the uh, the sound, which would be. And that's pretty cool, but double everything and it just sounds more intense. If you listen to Cemetery Gates, which really captivated me when I was younger, it still does. You could hear the pinch harmonics during the one of the riffs. And he really digs in. Some people are a little bit insecure about using pinch harmonics too much, but I don't think it took away from his sound. It really added to it, in my opinion. Sometimes people do harmonics, artificial harmonics, too much in riffs, and I think it's just to compensate because the riff's kind of lame. But that's no problem when it comes to Pantera because the riffs are always very exciting. <laughs> He uses it very effectively in Cowboys from Hell, adding a pull-off to it as well. That rhymed. This guitar really brings out the sound of digging in with a pick. It's that very metallic sound. And one thing Dybeg was really good at doing is he would play a note and he would make it very staccato using the side of his pick. So when I'm doing this, I'm picking the note and then I'm stopping it right away with the side of the pick. And sometimes you get a little bit of a harmonic or a scraping sound, which is very cool. You're gonna hear this on a lot of his solos. So there's one in particular where he climbs up way up here. One thing that's gonna take a lot of practice is legato technique. And that's where you do, your left hand does a lot of work where you have to do hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides in this case. And what you wanna do is you wanna be able to smoothly transition between notes. So what I recommend to get used to Dimebag's legato, which was excellent, he would take his thumb and bring it to the back of the neck so he would have full finger power here. If you bring your thumb up, sometimes your fingers feel a little bit weak. So thumb in the back, you get full power. And then practice a couple kind of simple ideas at first. They get difficult when you try to put them into the solo though. So let's just go to the third string, ninth fret. And we're just gonna do a simple nine, 10, 11 hammer on technique. Now, if you wanna practice that, you could do that across all the strings, that's fine. As long as you have really smooth transitions. You don't want gaps between the notes, obviously, when it comes to legato. Okay, another set that you wanna practice would be the one, two, four fingering. So we're gonna to go to the second string now, nine, 10, 12. And I want you to climb up using hammer-ons and come back down using pull-offs. You notice I only pick the first note and let the fingers do the rest. Let your fingers do the walking, as they used to say, way back in the day. And then take that concept and move it to other strings. Notice my right hand's doing a lot of muting 
as well as my left hand first finger is touching the string directly above it to make sure it's not making a bunch of noises. So, so far for this particular lick, we have just a chromatic one, two, three on the third string. Then when we get to the second and first strings, we're doing this one, two, four stretch as we do hammer-ons and pull-offs. <laughs> That alone will get you started, but I want to add one more thing to it. When you get to the very top here, as we do the hammer-ons and pull-offs, we're going to actually add a slide with a pinky, then we're going to come down with pull-offs again, hammer-on, slide again, pull-off, hammer-on, slide again. So this is two techniques in one. We have legato, and now we have legato slides. So watch what happens when we get to the top. Kind of cool. Sometimes I do add a pick just to make it stronger. I've seen him do it live where he just climbs up with his left hand. Sometimes he'll add a pick just to kind of boost it just a little bit. One thing I like to preach on the website is the use of the spider exercise, and that's when you just climb up the strings using one, two, three, four fingerings. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna incorporate it in one of the solos that he does. In Cemetery Gates, he does this really cool four pattern. So we're gonna start at the sixth string, 12th fret, and we're gonna go 12, 13, 14, 15, and then repeat it on the next string. Then we're gonna shift up one fret, do the same thing, and then even though he stops there in the song, we're gonna keep going just to show you the exercise. <laughs> It's really hard to do on the skinny frets. I found there's a little bit of a tendency to land on the frets themselves, which causes a dead sound. So you want to be careful of that, all right? So that's the concept. We're just doing fours, fours, moving up, fours, fours, and it kind of creeps up in this diagonal pattern. This particular technique is proof that you have to have crazy stretching ability to play dime bag licks. Can you reach from the 15th fret to the 22nd fret? Satch does this a lot too, Satriani. But let's try this one time. We're gonna do a pull off from the 22nd fret to the 15th fret just to test your flexibility. And then we're gonna do kind of a circular pattern where we're gonna reach down to the 20th fret with our ring finger on the second string. Does that sound familiar? Now, if you were to take the high note and just bring it down to the 21st fret, but keep the rest of it the same, you get a really doomy sound. That's just the Phrygian dominant mode, but when we're playing it, what you're noticing is I'm just doing his pattern. So there's some hammer-ons and pull-offs. You can look up the exact tab for the solo online if you want to, but I just wanted to show you where this, uh, where this ideas were coming from and which scale. Such a cool sound that really stuck out to me when I first heard it. I was like, what scale is that? And then I had to learn the theory behind it. And now I can use it in songs that I play. It's kind of nice to have that flexibility. The good old unison bends keep coming back. Dimebag uses them really extreme fashion. Of course, everything he does is extreme, I would say. Just remember what the unison bend is. Let's go to the second string, 12th fret, which is B. Reach down to the third string, 14th fret, which is A. And we're gonna use two fingers to help bend that A up to a B while leaving this first finger where it is, okay? So we get this. Love the sound of those frequencies fighting. Now if I move it around, pretty cool sound. Let's add a little bit of wah pedal just to, just to play with it a bit. really get that elephant sound going. He also uses the unison bend. I'm going to call it the elephant bend from now on, where he comes up here after a lick and just goes. 
Now, at first, it doesn't sound like the unison bend because I'm staggering it. I'm playing it one note at a time, and that's very possible to do as well. So first string, 14th fret, second string, 17th fret, bending this up and just going back and forth. At the end, I put it together, but you could see even if you stagger it, it can sound pretty cool. You guys are probably noticing a lot of techniques overlap between artists. That's because they sound really great. Well, the double string bend is huge in Die Beg's world. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it in a couple different situations. If you listen to the solo in Five Minutes Alone, he does this quite a bit. I'm not going to play it exactly like him, but here's the technique. Second string, third string, seventh fret, take your ring finger, lay it flat across the two strings. So it's boom, flat. Put your other two fingers behind it and just bend those two strings downward. Downward's fine with these two strings because you can't fall off the edge of the guitar. If you're on the first and second strings, you might do that. So this is okay to do. Another way he likes to use the double string bend is a lot of solos you'll see him reach up with the first finger after doing a pentatonic type run and just go back and forth by hitting those two notes. Now he's not just hitting the notes flat or straight up like this all the time. He'll be giving him a little bit of a bend if it's even just a quarter bend. It's just something to give him some more life. If you don't have wild vibrato, there's a cool way to really trigger that. Some people have very narrow vibrato, and it doesn't really sound too crazy. Maybe it's like this. That's just fine if you want to sound pretty, but when it comes to die bags playing, you want more of a wide, expressive vibrato, okay? So Dimebag might go something like this instead. I'll go slow first. So that's more of a slow bend at first. You start to speed that up. That's when the vibrato happens. So I consider vibrato really fast bends. All right, we're gonna do legato sixes now. And even though I believe Don Bag uses his front pickup for this, the amp I'm using is saturating the sound so much that the notes don't come through very well. So I'm gonna use the treble pickup again. But just keep in mind, I believe he uses the front pickup for this part. We're gonna go to the second string, 10th fret, and then we're gonna reach down to the third string, 13th fret, 12th fret, 10th fret, and then we're gonna do some hammer on some pull offs to keep that going because I don't wanna pick everything like we did earlier. Earlier we would have went. But right now we're gonna use more hammer-ons and pull-offs to make them legato sixes. So we're really only gonna pick the first two notes. Isn't that crazy? So pick, pick, everything else is left hand. Pick, pick, left hand, keep that going. Now what we're gonna do is instead of reaching to the second string 10th fret, we're gonna reach to the 10th fret of the first string. So it's a bigger reach. And start off slow, alternating between the two. Then you could bail on the second string completely. It was really just kind of like training wheels. Now we're gonna make the jump every time. Once again, the metronome will be your best friend for these damn bag techniques, especially the fast ones that require a lot of accenting. Here's a cool exercise for you guys. Let's say you're playing pentatonic, G minor pentatonic, and you end up on the fourth string, fifth fret. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it up close to the octave point. We're gonna reach down with our other hand. We're gonna fret that same note and we're gonna pluck the left hand off, causing this note to happen. Slide that up to the octave, reverse hands, pull off like you're doing a tap, slide up and keep exchanging. And you're gonna get this really cool dime bag effect.
What I'm realizing about this is as you're sliding up, it's really hard to keep track of where you're stopping. So it's almost like a ghost slide to nowhere and then pulling off as you go. As long as you have a decently long slide, it'll sound cool. Something that used to happen instinctively for me is I was able to climb up in minor thirds, and that sounds really great if you're doing that flat, flat five technique like we did way back in the beginning of this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first string and second string, and we're gonna do a flat five dyad, two, note, two notes. So slide into the seventh fret of the second string. Go to the eighth fret of the first string and then back to the seventh fret. It's gonna create that real harsh tritone sound, which I love. Now, the secret is we're gonna take that and we're gonna move it up a minor third, which means three frets. So one, two, three, do the same thing. Up three frets, up three. And by the time we get to the top, that real cool harmonic fight happens. I love it. Don't be afraid of using pentatonics for riffs. For example, this isn't in the right tuning, but... That's a very boxy shape using pentatonic, minor pentatonic, but he created a really cool riff out of it. So people always think pentatonics are lame, but they're used in very cool ways if you just use your imagination a little bit. If you add the flat five to that, some of these riffs that seem very pentatonic based can sound twice as interesting. So you might go. There's a flat five right there. Cowboys from Hell is a great example of a pentatonic idea using the flatted five. So in this case, if we're playing in E, the flat five is gonna be B flat, the first fret of the A string. So watch how he incorporates that in this riff. Flat five's huge in Cemetery Gates. There it is again, right here. I really don't like inside picking, but when I was doing research for this video, I realized I was doing Cowboys from Hell wrong. I was doing it the easy way, which is this. which I actually learned out of a book, so I thought I'd be correct. But when I watched the video, I'm learning through YouTube that a lot of things I used to play that I thought were right were a little bit off. What I was seeing was more of this. I'll try it slow first. So I was a little disheartened because I realized I'd have to do inside picking, which I hate to do. and. I was also a little bummed that I was playing it wrong for most of my life, but if you don't know what inside picking is, it's where the pick would be inside of two strings and you'd have to do a downstroke and an upstroke inside of that little area. I just don't like to feel trapped between the two strings, but you have to get used to it. Sometimes there's just riffs where you, there's no way around it. You have to do that. And this is the case, so watch real slow. Remember, I'm not teaching the riff, I'm just showing the inside picking technique for the most part. <laughs> Anytime you do an upstroke on the sixth string, it's an indication of inside picking. So we start off normal. Now we go to the inside world. One of the hardest things to master for me was picking in sixes on one string and basically repeating the left hand in threes, but having to pick sixes all together because you're doubling what the left hand does. This incorporates a lot of what he liked to do, which is doubling things like we talked about, and then working in threes. So you can already get pretty speedy with it. As you know earlier, when we did the Cowboys from Hell lick, we picked the first three, but then hammered on, which is a lot easier. When you have to pick everything, you gotta be a lot more precise. <laughs> Thank you. 
And the final stretch technique we're gonna do kind of blends a few things we already did together. We're gonna go 16th fret, 13th fret, 12th fret. So it's that Phrygian dominant shape, that stretch. And we're gonna try to do it with fast picking almost to tremolo picking speed. Now what we need to do is work with the metronome and use accents again, surprise, surprise. Eventually, you keep speeding up that metronome. You can let your right hand just go into tremolo pick mode, which whatever way you tremolo pick is fine for now. And just try to time your left hand, really getting that pinky to land on the downbeat if you can. Then we reach our pinky up to the 17th fret and do the last big stretch of the day. All right, guys, that was a lot of fun. My left hand got quite the workout there, but I feel like getting stronger every day through these techniques. And uh, if you enjoyed the videos, please check out theartofguitar.com and uh, sign up for that. And then the YouTube channel as well, if you want to subscribe, that would be great. We're getting a lot of people signing up and uh, a lot of people learning from our videos, it seems like. So once again, thanks, Steve, for letting me use your awesome guitar. And I uh, appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon.